after years and years of mathematics since kindergarten all the way through whatever grade you're in, you have finally made it to calculus! Okay, kinda, we're close, it's still pre-calc, but you're going to learn some calculus in this unit. It's so exciting, it is like the capstone of all of high school mathematics. All of the work you've done is now going to finally pay off as we learn some great things in this upcoming unit. Quick little introduction to calculus. What in the world is the difference? Well, uh, this isn't going to make this extremely clear, but at least you can get a taste of what we're doing next. Before calculus, we would be able to model an object traveling at a constant velocity. With calculus, we can model the velocity of an accelerating object. Think something that's slowing down, speeding up, and we can do models with that. Without calculus, we can still do the slope of a line. With calculus, we can do the slope of a curve. Look at how cool this is. Goes up and down, and we've got these crazy equations, which you will learn later on what some of this stuff means. But one thing, look right here. When the x value is a 2, right at that exact moment, the graph has a slope of negative 1. It's negative right there at that exact moment. We're going to be looking at some of that stuff in this unit. Also area of a rectangle. All right, we could do that. We've been able to do that since elementary school. But when we have calculus, we can do the area that's underneath a crazy curve like this. Now, we will not get into this. All right, we're not going to get into that with this unit, but that is a topic of calculus for next year. So the first lesson is on limits. We've done limits in the past, but now we're going to do it analyzing them. In other words, just kind of algebraically looking at the expression. So let's remind ourselves how we did it graphically first. So we'll zoom in here, take a look at this equation and the, its graph. We have a hole right here at x equals 2. So what is the limit as x is approaching 2? As we come from this side, where is it headed? As we go from to that side, where is it headed? And it is that point right there, which is 7. So if you remember, the limit is the y value, important stuff right there, the y value, the function is approaching at a given x value. So for this one, it would equal 7. That's the limit. Now, how could we do this if we didn't have a graph? That's what we're going to be talking about. Steps to finding this without the graph, just using it, doing it analytically. So I want you to write some steps down. The first thing you'll do is just called direct substitution. Really easy stuff. You'll see here. Then the next thing is simplify, and then you go back to direct substitution. A couple of little parts of, of uh, simplifying. One strategy is we're just going to factor and then cancel things. Another strategy will be if you see square roots, you're going to rationalize it. Now, these are not the only steps involved uh, in it with limits analytically, but they are the main ones that you'll see and the ones that kids will often see in an AP calculus type exam. So I'll come back to this at the end of the lesson. You'll want to pause this right now if you don't have all of this written out. First off, direct substitution. Watch how easy this is. All we do is you just take the, the x value that it's approaching and you just try to plug it in. Okay, because if the graph exists at negative 1, then remember a limit is just a y value. So we go like this, negative 1 squared plus 2, negative 1 minus 4. That's it. Plug it in, simplify. We get 1 minus 2 minus 4, and 1 minus 2 minus 4 is negative 5. Done with that one easy direct substitution. So again, here, just plug it in. So 3 times 2 minus 2 is equal to the square root of 6 minus 2, which is 4, and that equals 2. Last one, number 3. If you have a constant, where in the world do you plug the 4 in? There's no, there's no variable to plug it into, so it's just going to equal whatever that constant is. And that makes sense if you think about the graph. If we have a graph of y equals, uh, y equals 5, just some flat line y equals 5, then, okay, that's supposed to be flat, then when you get to x equals 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, the y value is a 5. So constants, nowhere to plug in the x value then that constant is the y value. Next up, 
we're going to factor and cancel. So again, the, the clue is to always try, try to do substitution first. In fact, I will have some of them on there that look like you need to factor and cancel, but it's actually direct substitution if you just tried that first on your practice. So if we plug a zero into this x, that's our problem. That becomes a zero on bottom and we cannot divide by a zero. So we're going to take this limit, write it out again, limit as x approaches zero of factor the numerator, we can pull out an x, now that becomes 4x minus 5 all over x, and now here we can cancel out that x and that x. So really what we're looking at is the limit as x approaches 0 of 4x minus 5. That's what we're looking at. Now we do direct substitution. So what is this going to equal? Plug the 0 into the x, that all cancels, and we're left with negative 5. There we go. So you simplify, cancel, factor, cancel things out, then use direct substitution. So if you look back at the, your notes at the top there in that box, that's what I'm talking about. So let's try number 5. Factor this thing. Okay, so the limit as x approaches negative 7, and let's go like this, x plus 7. Now here's a little hint. Usually, in these problems, if you see a thing down here that's x plus 7, that's probably in the factor on in the numerator. Not always, but there's a good chance that that's, that's it. So let's just see if it is. I'm going to write down an x plus 7 and see if I can come up with something over here that would make this multiply out. So I've got to multiply to 2x in front, so I'm definitely putting a 2x there. I have to multiply to a negative 7 at the end, so let's put a minus 1. Okay, so that'll set that up. Now let's check the middle term. So multiply this out. 2x squared, so what's the middle term? I'd have a minus 7x, and then I would have a plus 14x. Yep, that gives me the 13x in the middle. Okay, so that's just checking the middle term by foiling that thing out. All right, now I have cancel, cancel, and then we go to the limit as x approaches negative 7 of 2x minus 1. And what does that equal? We plug in the negative 7 into the x, simplify. Negative 7 times 2, negative 14 minus 1, negative 15. There's our answer. And if you think about the graphs, back in uh, one of our earlier units, what was this, unit 3, unit 5, way back when, when we would do these things that cancel, that's actually a removable discontinuity, which is the whole. That is the whole, if we go way back here to this graph, that we're talking about there. It's a gap in the graph. It doesn't matter that there's a gap, though, because the limit is where it is headed, which is going to be negative 15 on this one. All right, number six, why don't you pause this one, pause the video, try this one on your own, and I'll have the answer appear. And there's your answer to number six. The answer should be negative six. I tried to show every single little step along the way here so you can follow what I did, even including where you the limit drops off. Now, the important thing to remember is this limit notation that's right here, I should use a highlighter, this part right here, that does not go away until you do the direct substitution. So notice I am leaving it on every single line until the very end. I use direct substitution, poof, it disappears, simplify. Boom, done. Number seven, now we're going to rationalize. So if you see the square roots, remember the first thing you do is substitution. You try to plug the zero in, but you're not going to get it. You plug a zero in at the bottom and that does not work. You're going to end up with a zero. You can't have zero on bottom. So we are going to rationalize. So I will multiply top and bottom by x plus 5 plus square root of 5. Now let me show you what I'm doing. Now you've got to multiply top and bottom. Now the reason I'm doing this is because, and some of you will remember this, it's all about the difference of squares. If I have a minus b, which is what I have up here on top. This is like my a, this is like my b. And I multiply it by a plus b, so this is the a and this is the b again, then what are you going to get? It's the difference of squares. You get a squared minus b squared. That's what the numerator becomes. So on my next step down, let's go like this, limit as x approaches 0 of, now I've got my fraction, so let's take a look at the numerator. It's I don't actually have to think through and multiply everything out. I'm just going to go straight to the difference of squares. It's going to be x plus 
5. See, now I just have x plus 5. The square root is gone because I squared it. Minus, and then what do I have here? Square root of 5 times square root of 5 is just going to be a 5. Okay? And uh, in the denominator, this actually is much easier than it looks because you don't have to multiply this out. It's just going to be x plus 5 plus square root of 5, close parentheses, there's my denominator. All right, let me get rid of this part. We already talked about that. Disappear. Next line down, the limit as x approaches infinity. So what happens in the numerator? You have x plus 5 minus 5. So all you'll have here is x over x. And as I'm writing this, some of you are going to be able to see, ah, oh, you see what's going to happen. Hopefully you can see what's going to happen. If not, let me show you. And then think ahead a step, and that is, ugh, sorry, that is going to be that the x's cancel. So you have a numerator that has an x, boom. Denominator has an x, boom. And they cancel because this is multiplication, so that's allowed to cancel. And then you go down to our next line. This is just a 1. That's a 1. Now you can do direct substitution, so the 0 can get plugged into that x right there. So you're going to have 1 over the square root of 0 plus 5 plus another radical 5, square root of 5. And then what does that equal? 1 over 2, square root of 5. There's our answer. And that's how you rationalize. So I'm going to give you a chance to do number 8. Remember, try direct substitution. 5 gets plugged in. 5 minus 5 does not work because you get a 0 on bottom. So try to rationalize this one. Pause the video now. Let's give it a shot. There's your answer to number 8, 1 over 6. You can follow my work along here. Just remember, you're supposed to do the opposite of the term in the middle so that you complete this uh, difference of squares thing. And then you just simplify it down. x minus 5 should have canceled. And then you plug in the 5 with direct substitution right there. We have not covered every possible way of doing limits analytically. Okay, there's going to be things that maybe we didn't cover right here in the lesson. Uh, that we're not, we can't give you every possible scenario. Sometimes you just got to think through your algebra skills and figure out how to do this. But that gives you the main idea of how to do them. Now, the last two problems I've put here are two variables, meaning I've got an x and an h, or maybe it's a y and a w. Just kind of depends. So the different variables. Here I will say one of the variables is going to approach a value, in this case a 0. Well, I can't just plug a 0 in and get my answer because that would make a 0 on bottom. So what we do is you take the numerator and you multiply all this stuff out. So first line here, it's going to be the limit. In fact, I'm going to speed this up. Let's go faster speed because it's going to take forever. Of really long fraction. Ooh, that's sloppy. Then we multiply this thing out. It's going to be x plus h times x plus h. That's squared. Distribute the 3, negative 3, x minus 3, h. Distribute the negative, distribute the negative, ne negative x squared plus 3, x all over h. Okay, next line. Limit as h approaches 0. Now I've got to multiply this thing out here, this foiling thing. If you can do it in your head, awesome. If you have to write it out, go ahead. So it's going to be x squared plus 2hx. If you have to, multiply it out. Combine terms, you'll see. Plus h squared. Now, is there anything over here that can combine with the other things that we've done? Yes, I think so. We've got a positive 3x here that's canceling with a negative 3x there. So those things are going to cancel. And then I think that's the only thing that cancels. Yeah. So then we have a minus 3h minus x squared. And again, that's all over h. What else now? We're going to look for some more things that cancel. So I've got an x squared here and a minus x squared there. Those terms will cancel. And let's see, I think that's it. Yep, that's the only things that cancel, so it cleans up a bit here. Now we have the limit as h approaches 0 of. You can see these are long, a bit time-consuming. That's why I left you lots of space to figure this one out. So we... Notice here we only have 2hx plus h squared minus 3h. That's the only thing left. So what I'm going to do is notice that every single term has an h in it. Factor out what they have in common, and we're left with 2x plus h minus 3 all over h. h is cancel. Perfect. Now we plug in a 0, and we'll have our final answer. h becomes a 0, and all you're left with is 2x minus 3. So on these problems, what will happen is h is becoming a 0, 
it's going to disappear and then you're just having an expression for your final answer. You get good at this, it is going to help you a ton in your next lesson. So this will be our last one, number 10 here. Why don't you pause, try to get this one figured out and I'm gonna have all this long spiel here uh, written out so it'll pop up and show you the answer. Good luck. And your final answer for number 10 is 4x plus 5. Here we go. And just kind of follow the steps along. You can see things cancel with each individual step until you got down to this last one. Plug in your 0 and you get 4x plus 5. Okay, pause there if you're not sure about that. Try to follow my steps on that one. And you have finished. So in summary, let's remember the first step is direct substitution. Just try to plug that thing straight into the expression that you get. Remember if it's a constant, like it's the limit of just a 7 or something like that, then it's just going to be, there's nowhere to plug in the number, like let's say x approaches 1, nowhere to plug in the number, so it's just a 7. If that doesn't work, like you get a 0 on the bottom or some crazy thing like that, then try to factor it and cancel then do direct substitution. Or if it's a radical, rationalize it. Basically the main idea is just try to somehow simplify the thing down and then try direct substitution. This is Mr. Bean signing off. Rock that mastery check and I'll see you back in the next lesson.